In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this scroll animation effect in Figma. So here, as you can see, the hero section is fully animated. And as I scroll down, you will see that these events will move back to the calendar right here. And if I just keep scrolling, you will see that the feature section is also animated. So let's dive in and create this beautiful animation. Here is the landing page we are going to animate. The first thing we need to do is prepare our design. Here is my hero section and inside we have the nav bar, we have the hero content here, and finally we have this calendar. So we need to animate all these elements once the page loads, right? Before I start prototyping, I'm going to prepare my layers. So here, as you can see, I have this calendar group and inside this calendar, I have this calendar base and I have all these events as you can see, but they are named the same, which is going to be problematic. So we need to fix that. First of all, I'm going to select all these events like that. And I'm going to hit command R or control R to rename them. Here I'm going to click on current name, space and number up like that. And I'm going to hit rename. There we go. Now each of these events has a unique name, which is so important because we are going to animate these events. The next thing you need to keep in mind is that all the moving parts should not be grouped. So here, these events are inside this calendar group and I'm going to move them outside like that. And now I'm going to be able to animate them. If they are grouped, it won't work. So keep that in mind. It's so important. All right. Our hero section is ready. Now I'm going to select this hero section group duplicate it, move it outside like that. And now we are going to turn it into a component because we are going to use interactive components to animate all these elements and keep our design organized. Okay. So here is my hero section. I'm going to click on this little icon to turn it into a component just like that. And now we need to create a component set. So while it's selected, I'm going to click on this plus icon. All right, here we have two variants. I'm going to select this hero section component set, rename this property to state. So here I'm going to take a few of these events out. So let's select this one, move it out. I'm going to hit K on my keyboard to select the scale tool, hold down the shift key and scale it up like that. I'm going to rotate it a bit as well. Okay. Then I'm going to take this one out scale it up. Okay. Let's rotate it. All right. Cool. Now I'm going to select this one and move it out, scale it up and just rotate it a bit. Okay. I can just adjust their placement a bit. And now I'm going to take three more events out of this calendar, maybe this one and just put it outside, scale it up, rotate it. Let's take this one out as well scale it up, rotate it. And finally this one, let's scale it up and rotate it a bit. All right. Once you're satisfied with the placement of these events, you need to go ahead and duplicate this variant because we need to have three variants in order for this animation to work properly. All right. It looks good. Now let me select the hero section component set, enlarge it, and I'm going to just duplicate this variant, hit control D or command D and I can move it up. So in total, we need to have three variants. Now I'm going to select the second one and just change the value of this state property to load. And the third one is going to be final. So here is how we are going to animate these variants. In the initial state, none of these elements should be visible. So we need to set the opacity of all these elements to zero. And we also want to move our elements, right? So what I'm going to do, is select this nav bar first, hold down the shift key and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm going to move it up like this to move it outside this frame. And while it's selected, I'm going to head over to the layer section and set its opacity to zero to make it hidden. Then I'm going to select this hero content frame, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and move it up a few pixels like this and just change its opacity to zero as well. Also, I'm going to move these events out, but make sure not to move it outside the variant like this, because now, as you can see, it's outside the variant. So to avoid that, what you can do is hold down the space bar while you are moving it like this. Now I'm holding the space bar on my keyboard and I'm going to move it out. I'm going to select this one, move it, hold down the space bar like this and just repeat the same thing like this. I'm going to move it out, move this out as well. And finally 
this one. All right, nice. Now I'm gonna select this calendar group and set its opacity to zero as well. And also make sure to select all these events and just set the opacity to zero. Okay, now is the time to make these variants interactive. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our today's sponsor, Milanote. Milanote is a tool for organizing creative projects. It lets you create a hub for your design project and organize every part of it in one flexible place. I'm currently using Milano to organize my UI UX design projects. I use its intuitive drag and drop interface to create mood boards, wireframes, design briefs, and sitemaps for my projects. With Milano, you can effortlessly collect notes, images, videos, tasks, and more, all in one place. When you're ready to share your work, you can invite your colleagues and clients to gather important feedback and collaborate with them in real time. Whether you are a UI UX designer, product designer, UX researcher, or a generalist, Milanode makes starting a new project easy, with over 100 built-in templates available for every type of creative project. Best of all, Milanode is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start your next creative project. So what I'm gonna do is select this default variant, head over to the prototype tab, and I'm gonna connect it to the next variant like this. And here I'm gonna set the trigger to after delay. So after let's say 1500 milliseconds, the page should start loading. I'm gonna set it to smart animate. And here I'm gonna set the duration to 1000 milliseconds or one second. And it's gonna be easy and out to make it look more realistic. Now what we need to do is create our scroll animation. As you may know, Figma doesn't have a scroll trigger. So we need to find another way to make it work. What we can do is select this particular calendar group as our trigger and connect it to our next variant, which is the final variant. And this time, instead of using after delay, I'm gonna use this mouse enter trigger. So when the user's mouse enters this section, this particular group, as you can see, then the animation starts playing. All right, I hope that makes sense. So mouse enter, smart animate, and I'm gonna set it to 1200 and we are basically done. Let's go ahead and see whether everything works or not. I'm gonna select this home page, duplicate it, and I'm gonna get rid of this hero section. Just remove it, head over to the assets tab, and from here, I'm gonna drag and drop an instance of this hero section component we just created, like this. Just align it to the center, and I'm gonna move it down a few pixels to have some breathing room above our nav bar. All right, great. Now I'm gonna select this home page and I'm gonna preview it. Let's see how it looks. There we go, all our elements were animated, but now let's see whether our scroll animation works or not. You saw that once my mouse entered this section, all those events were moving back to this calendar, which is exactly what we needed. It's so cool, isn't it? Let me refresh the page once again. All right. And there it is. You see how simple it was? Now let's move on to our features section and animate our cards as well. All right, for the features section, we need to repeat the same process. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this feature section group. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that these cards, these feature cards, are not grouped. So here, as you can see, I have this feature section and inside I have these four feature cards. I'm gonna make sure that they are not grouped, otherwise the animation won't work. So let's select this feature section, duplicate it, move it out, and I'm gonna turn it into a component. There we go. Let's add a variant to it. I'm gonna select this component set, rename the property to state, the first one is gonna be default and we are gonna rename the second one in a second. First, we need to hide all these elements, obviously. And also, I'm gonna move these elements. Let me select this feature's content frame, hold down the shift key and move it up a few pixels and set the opacity to zero. Then I'm gonna select these feature cards set their opacity to zero. I'm not gonna move them now because we are gonna animate them later. Here in our second variant, obviously the features content should be visible. So the opacity is set to 100% and the placement is correct. So we don't need to do anything else. But in the second variant, 
we need to make sure that these cards are hidden like in the first variant but also we are going to move them and rotate them a bit to prepare them for our next animation so before i move them I'm going to select this variant too and I'm going to duplicate it, hit Ctrl D or Command D. Now I can select this one, rename it to load and this one can be named final. Now I'm going to move and rotate these cards in our load variant. Make sure to adjust them in the correct variant, not in the final variant. It's so important. So I'm going to select this feature one. I'm going to rotate it a bit like this and also I'm going to move it to the left like that. Now I'm going to select the second one, rotate it to the right and move it to the right as well. Let's repeat the same thing for this one. I'm going to rotate it like this, move it to the left and this one I'm going to rotate it and move it to the right just like this. Now I'm going to select all of them and set their opacity to zero. All right, now let's go ahead and make the connections. I'm going to select this default variant, head over to the prototype tab and connect it to the second variant. The trigger is going to be mouse enter. So once we enter this section, these texts should start fading in and they should start moving down a few pixels. Okay, so the trigger should be mouse enter, smart animate, and I'm going to set the duration to 800. But for this second animation, I'm going to select this load variant, connect it to our final variant. But this time, the trigger is going to be after delay. Okay, because we've already entered this section. Now we are going to set a delay for it. I'm going to set it to 800 milliseconds. It's fine. And the duration is going to be 1000 milliseconds. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to remove this feature section. Head over to assets, drag and drop an instance of this feature section here. Okay, let's align it to the center. I'm going to move it down and I'm going to make sure to maintain a 160 pixel margin between these two sections. If you're not sure how to check the margin, you can just hold down the alt or option key on your keyboard and just hover your mouse over your elements like this. Okay, let's give it a try. There we go. Everything works as expected. And finally, our cards are animated. If you want to learn how to make your design responsive using Figma variables, make sure to check out this video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have a great day and see you next time.